In this video, we're gonna be talking about a potential treatment for the coronavirus in patients who are critically ill with COVID-19. And the biggest reason why COVID-19 kills people is that this is a virus that targets the ACE2 receptor, and the ACE2 receptor is something that can get deep down into your lungs. So when this virus infects you, it infects your entire respiratory system, your sinuses, your mouth, your throat, as well as deep into your lungs. And so the patients who die from the coronavirus are generally having pneumonia because their lungs are so infected. And so figuring out how do we get treatments and medications delivered right where they're needed inside of patients who are critically ill is a very big challenge for us. But fortunately, we do have some pre-existing technologies that we may be able to turn to to help us in this problem and that is nebulizers and breathing treatments. So people who already have asthma, we give you nebulizers to help relax down your lungs so you can actually start breathing again. We may be able to also create medications that we can put into nebulizers that would help your cells in your lungs be able to fight off and defend themselves against the coronavirus from infecting them. And so there's two things that we need to figure out here. Number one, what kind of antibodies are gonna have really good affinity for the coronavirus because the antibodies are things that we could potentially have your cells start secreting by giving them some kind of genetic material and when your cells are secreting these antibodies basically when if you had a cell right here and this cell is secreting a bunch of these antibodies these antibodies would just stick onto the actual coronavirus itself and there would be a bunch of them so these are referred to as neutralizing antibodies and so when the coronavirus tries to infect the cell it can't because there's physically something blocking it. It's getting a lot of steric hindrance, so we say in chemistry. And so if we can somehow figure out what kind of antibodies do a great job at blocking and basically shielding your cells from getting infected by the coronavirus, that would be step one. Step two would be figuring out how do we get that actual genetic material into the places of your body where this needs to be happening. And so there's two companies working on this. The first company is called Neuromune, and what Neuromune does, and they're located in Germany, is they take patients who have successfully recovered from a coronavirus infection or COVID-19. And so if you successfully recovered from that infection, it means that your adaptive immune system has cells that are making antibodies that had an affinity for the actual coronavirus. And because of that, we know that you are making some good antibodies. So what we're able to do is take those patients' immune cells figure out what kind of antibodies were they making by sequencing them. And then once we've sequenced them, we actually have now the genetic material to do this. So the job of Neuromune right now is to figure out what are the sequences of the antibodies that have very good affinity for the coronavirus, but we also have to make sure that we're not going to be creating things that might be toxic. So that is another huge thing to take into account when we're, when we're developing and designing these kinds of antibodies. Step two here is going to be once we've figured out what are the good antibodies, we got to get that genetic material delivered into the cells and we got to have those cells actually make this kind of antibody so you'll have a fighting chance of blocking the coronavirus infections. And so that's where another company called Ethris comes into play. And what Ethris does is they take the genetic material, which is RNA in this case, and they're able to figure out how to put this into a nebulizer and give it to your cells. The two big challenges that we have right now with getting RNA to be uptaken into your cells is that number one, RNA, if we were to just put it in your blood right now, is going to elicit a very strong immune response. What that means is that your immune system, your white blood cells, your B cells, your T cells, are gonna see this RNA floating around. They're gonna assume it's a bad guy. They're gonna start throwing all these alarm signals and causing lots of damage because they're gonna generate inflammatory responses and if we're trying to treat a critically ill patient who's almost dead already, inducing an additional inflammatory response is not gonna be ideal. So we have to figure out how to make non-immunogenic types of RNA that are not going to cause your body's immune system to freak out. So your body has to like this kind of medication that we're giving it so that we don't just do more damage than good when we're trying to save the lives of some critically ill patient with the coronavirus. The second challenge that we have to figure out here is how to get the actual genetic material into your cells. So just because I was able to get the genetic material into your blood and your immune system's okay with it, I now need to figure out how to get this genetic material into your cells. And your cells, just like you and me, have skin. And the skin is a barrier to the outside world. It's called the cell membrane. And so figuring out how do you get this genetic material past the cell membrane 
and into the cells where it's in the cytosol so that now you can actually have ribosomes and also other machinery come in to actually start translating the genetic material to make the actual antibodies that would stick onto the bad guy, the coronavirus, it's going to take a lot of work. And so that is where uh, Ethris comes into play. And they've developed something referred to as the stabilized non-immunogenic RNA or SNM RNA. And this is a proprietary technology that they have been developing for a while now. And so they are collaborating with Neuroimmune in order to figure out, number one, what does a good antibody look like and what is that good antibody's genetic sequence? And then after that happens, what can we do to actually administer this genetic material and get it into your cells so your cells can actually make it? And so the hope here is at the end of the day, we're gonna be able to make these types of nebulizers so that if you are a critically ill patient with the coronavirus, we will be able to basically hook you up to a breathing machine, you will inhale the genetic material, this genetic material will be able to not cause any kind of immune response. It will be able to enter your cells. Once it's inside of your cells, it will be able to tell your cells how to make really good antibodies that are able to stick onto bad guys like the coronavirus. And so when your cells in your lungs, for instance, are secreting all these antibodies, they basically are putting out a bunch of shields in your surrounding tissues so that when the coronavirus comes by, it's just gonna get stuck with so many antibodies that it physically can't infect anything anymore. And this is going to hopefully save a lot of patients' lives. And so this stuff is very exciting. And I think it's also excellent to just keep up to date with what's going on and what are you know some of the smartest scientists and physicians out there working on right now. I hope this stuff's interesting. Let me know if you have any questions. Please make sure to stay safe and wash your hands and take care.